Hello interwebs and welcome to my channel. So for today's video I'm going to be reviewing the latest Halo novel, Halo Shadow of Reach, which is also incidentally a Halo Infinite prequel book. I know, you're like, what? Jesse Gender's review in a Halo novel? What? What is this about? This isn't Star Trek. I didn't come to Jesse Gender's channel for non-Star Trek related book reviews. Well, I mean, come on. Look, I got the Master Chief right here. He's been here the whole time. I like Halo. I get it. But before we get started, I should at least let you know that this copy of the book was provided to me for free by Simon & Schuster. They reached out to me to give me a free copy, so I'm just reviewing it off of that. Um, it is kind of funny, though, that Simon & Schuster also publishes the Star Trek books, but I didn't get any mention of Star Trek books. They wanted to give me a Halo novel, which is like, cool. I love Halo. Halo's great, but, uh, but yeah. Where, where are those Star Trek novels at, Simon & Schuster? But now that I've done my digging for more free stuff because I'm shameless like that, uh, let's dive into this book. Well, for those of you who don't know my history with Halo, I have played every single one of the games. In fact, they're one of my favorite game series of all time. And I have read a fair few of the Halo novels. I'm not Brian David Gilbert up in here and having read every single one, but I generally know a lot about the lore and have been a big fan of the Halo Expanded Universe for a fairly long time. In fact, I usually like the stories as, as the same with Star Trek too. I usually like the book stories in the books more than I actually like the stories in the actual like game themselves. Why am I holding up this book? I don't need to be holding this book. I can put this book down. I don't need to hold it up for my whole review. But I also understand that the Halo Expanded Universe can seem kind of daunting. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And if you want to know more, Brian David Gilbert, I made reference to him, made a great video sort of diving into the Halo canon and does it in a very fun, comedic way like he always does. But it also can feel very intimidating when you're stepping into a new Halo book of like, do I need to know everything about this world to understand what's going on? And while this book does have a fair few connections to other books in the series, there are a lot of references to them, they smartly don't make it um, necessary to know every little facet about Halo to understand this book. In fact, really the only thing you need to know, and I think this was smartly done to get into these books, was just having played the Halo games. If you have played all the games, you'll generally have a fair understanding and working knowledge of what's going on within this book series. Shadow of Reach is billed as a prequel and setup to Halo Infinite, the next Halo game that's going to be coming out sometime. I, we don't know because it's been delayed, but we're all very excited about it. But the book actually reads a little bit more like a sequel to both the Halo Reach video game and the first ever Halo novel, Halo Fall of Reach. It really feels a little bit more uh, like it's building off of those storylines than really feeding into Halo Infinite. Now, there are some kernels and nuggets of seeds of where the stories are going to go within Halo Infinite throughout the book and especially towards the end that I won't spoil here. But really, it feels like those are just like tantalizing hints that aren't really going to have a huge, huge uh, play in the actual game itself. But they are intriguing and have me very interested in where that story is going to go. But again, this really feels more like a sequel to those uh, Reach-centered books and games. The story centers around Master Chief and Blue Team, which many people may know from Halo 5, returning to their hometown, their home planet of Reach, which had been glad and basically destroyed after, during the Covenant War. And so for all of them, it's obviously a very emotional and uh, kind of hard thing for them to go back and see their home planet just entirely, entirely destroyed and coming back for the very first time. And it's nice to see them return to this planet that has been so pivotal in all of Halo canon and lore and really delve into the emotional depths of it with the Master Chief because they are sent there by Catherine Halsey, the creator of Cortana, to get something secret uh, in order for them to combat Cortana. Cortana, who is raging across the galaxy as we saw across at the end of Halo 5. But unfortunately, this is a very, very, very um, top secret mission, so the Master Chief and Blue Team can't really reveal what they're after when they get to Reach, which causes them to run into conflict when they start finding these different factions on Reach itself, which are battling some remnants of the Covenant, and actually um, Atriok, the villain from Halo Wars 2, uh, has sent his factions here in order to look for stuff of his own desires and interest, um, which I won't spoil here because it also is some of that sort of leading into Halo Infinite stuff. So there are these two factions back on Reach. There's some humans that have come back to Reach or are fighting on Reach to reclaim the planet, um, but they are fighting against Atriox and some Revenant Covenant forces who are also after their own goals and their own ends. Now, Master Chief and the Blue Team are obviously highly emotionally invested in retaking Reach. It is their home. It's where they came from. So they want to, they want to help fight to retake it, but it is not their main goal. And so I really love this 
interesting conflict and setup for Master Chief and the rest of Blue Team in that their heart is telling them that they need to fight for uh, Reach to regain Reach, but they also have a mission to to do that is much more important, much more uh, meaningful to the larger galaxy proper, and they're also good soldiers, so they know that they need to go in and do their mission and they can't get sidetracked by this other stuff. It's a really interesting sort of depth to Master Chief that we rarely see in the video games. While Halo 4 kind of dove a little bit more into the Master Chief psychology, he's mostly just been a kind of silent protagonist. So I always really like reading the Halo novels that feature Master Chief as a character because it gives us a little bit more um, inside of his head, inside the, the helmet, as it were, to kind of understand what emotions that he's feeling. Um, because you can tell he's a human, he, he has emotions, he has feelings, um, but you don't really ever get to see that in the game. And what I think that Troy Dennings, the author of this book, does really, really well is never making it feel like the Master Chief isn't showing that outward exterior of this sort of more silent kind of guy. We get wonderful rich inner monologues for Master Chief, but we never see him still, you know, breaking character and becoming too talkative or too emotive um, within the world around him. So there's that good balance between making him a much more interesting and complex character in sort of his inside, but we don't sort of like lose his characterization of who he is when he interacts with others. So really great job there. And to be honest, that's really the main crux of this story. The rest of it is sort of like extrapolating out this event. We get some cool stuff with Master Chief forming relationships with ships with Blue Team, his sort of, uh, you know, how he feels comfortable taking command of situations when technically he is not a commissioned officer. So he sort of has these debacles with people on Reach who are commissioned officers, but he has much more experience. So he's sort of towing the line between trying to, uh, to you know, be a good commander and, and listen to orders, but also sort of say, hey, this is what you need to be doing. This is how you fight uh, the Covenant. And also uh, coming into conflict with the leaders of the resistance groups on Reach, basically saying like, look, I can't, help you as much as you want me to. I didn't come to this planet to help you, even though that's what you really desperately need right now. Um, so wonderful, like sort of interplay and conflicts between all the characters, wonderful emotional depth to Master Chief. And it's a book that I would really, 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 re really recommend if you are really invested in the Halo lore and really invested in learning more about the characters and world of Halo. That being said, if you're picking up this book to sort of get some hints or some uh, to whet your appetite for Halo Infinite while we're all in this sort of waiting mode for the game, I will say I don't think there's a lot there for you. There's a little bit of hints and stuff. Again, I won't spoil because that all comes towards the end of the book. But generally, I will say it's it's not all that much, and it's not stuff that you probably won't be explained within the first like two minutes of the game. Uh, there's nothing like really like some super secret surprising thing. And I mean, I guess that makes sense. They're not going to reveal like big story beats within the book before the game itself comes out. So there's nothing hugely shocking or surprising, but there is some tantalizing hints if you really, really, really want to have some idea of where Halo Infinite is going to go. Uh, but it really doesn't uh, give you all that much in terms of the larger plot of where that game is. So that's my basic thoughts on this book. I think it's a really wonderful character study on uh, Master Chief. It's a great sort of sequel to some of the seminal parts of both the Halo book lore and Halo games with Halo Reach and Halo the Fall of Reach. Um, and also it's a sort of you know, tantalizing hint at what's to come. Uh, but generally, I think it's a very, very solid exploration of the Halo lore. But have you read this book? Do you like Halo novels? Do you want me to do more novel reviews of other tie-in books or, you know, just novel reviews in general? I would love to hear all that down in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and help me out on Patreon as well, because I can't, you know, as much as I love getting free books, I can't be fed by, uh, by free books. They do look fairly appetizing. But, uh, but yeah, if you want to help me uh, pay the bills, Patreon is a great place to start. But beyond that, I hope that you, as always, live long and prosper. Thank you so much to all of my patrons, especially Catherine Lambeth, Ashley Allen Bokikio, Miranda Janelle, Eli Berg Moss, Ashlyn Solstice, Greg Gillum, Stephen Kleinard, Randy Thompson, Chamomile T, Philip Sorbello, Munir Amlani, Boyd and Mary Beth Earl, Stephen Shuthart, Wellington Marcus, Wayne Twitchell, Buttoneer, Ish the Mad, Dominic Noble, John Steele, Gavin Robinson, Michael Beam, William Stewart, Nathan Olson, Amanda Ronnie Indange, The Sir Spence, BBD, Hannah F., Miguel Posadas, Jason Knott, Maeve, Andrew Jorgenston, Sabraxis, Jasmine, Chris Brown, Bree Beecher, Nathan Steele, Chloe Dollar, Jane Packard, Dante St. James, Wendizzle Bizzle, Geek Filter, Mark the Edge, Pissed and Twisted Garage, 
Gretchen Badger, Sarah Bystam, Celestial Dawn, Polly Mina, Din, Jean Mithoon, Lysa, Andrew Lamoro, Zone One Librarian, Michael Hardy. Thank you, all of you, especially this month.